inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the formation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or fasting and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison, and this is you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, Depart from me, you cast into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his enemies. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you not welcome me. Naked, and you not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or fasting, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? And he will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did not to one of the least of these, you did it not to and they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
I am king, and everyone is subject to me. The second reading is telling us that Christ being the first fruits coming from the dead, he'll come at the end when he delivers the kingdom of God the Father. After destroying the rule and every authority and power, he must reign. Yes, he's our king, Jesus Christ. He must reign until he has put all the enemies under his feet. All of his enemies under his feet. And he says, he has a call in his letter the, the Corinthians chapter 15, he's telling us, and the last enemy to destroy the rule. Really? To tell the enemy. Death is not something that is palatable. Nobody would like to walk towards death. If you are told that death is coming when you are sitting down, would you wait for death to come? Sure, that will happen. Because nobody wants to walk down there. Yes, death is for sure. The last thing that we talk about in these last days are death, judgments, hell or heaven. And therefore, death is inevitable. Yes, it is not the death of our physical bodies that is made. It is the death of our spiritual bodies. And that is the death that we really fight against. If my spirit is dead, then I cannot meet my Lord. That's why Christ is saying, Paul is telling us, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And you read later on in that chapter, death, that death, oh, where is your sting? Death, oh, where is your strength? Because Jesus has conquered even death. The Son, the Son of God, the nature that death is gone. But the devil, the diablo, has no place in our lives. This is the king that we are being told in the gospel today that he will sit at his seat of throne at the end of this. And he will gather all the nations and will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on the branches and the goats. Today, am I behaving like a goat or like a sheep? Who are the goats? Who are the sheep? In this analogy, we, are, we know that the goats are the ones who see somebody who is dancing naked and do nothing about them. While the sheep are those who see a person who is sick or in prison and they grow. Where do I want to be? It is not going to be defined tomorrow, but today. The right to sit on the right or on the left on the throne of our King is our choice now. It's a choice that we make now, today. Heaven or hell, heaven or hell is a choice. If you gaze your eyes on the cross of Jesus, indeed, that is the seat, that is the throne of our master. And there is not just a throne of judgment, it is a throne of mercy. Remember the words that Jesus spoke among the many words of the cross? He said, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they are. Mm -hmm. It's a throne of mercy. And therefore, we are asked to approach this throne of mercy, not to be judged, but to be welcomed. Like the loving Father welcoming back the lost son. Like the shepherd coming back with the sheep that was lost back to the fold of the night. Brothers and sisters. Let us approach this seat of throne every day by listening to the word of God and putting it in our minds, meditating it well, having it in sync in our hearts, and let our hands be able to act upon it.
Jesus, thanking you now.